Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Neil Wood of the Kick Guru. This case is the Fantex Evolve X, uh, arguably the star of the show at Computex 2018. When I walked into the Fantex suite at the Hyatt and I saw Evolve X, my initial impression was, that looks all right, that looks like, and you'll forgive the expression, an evolution of the Evolve ATX TG, TG for tempered glass. They had clearly sorted out uh, the breathing at the front, they'd clearly helped the exhausting at the top, it wasn't immediately apparent the case is now a bit taller than it used to be and a bit wider. It's still the same depth. This looks like a mid-tower ATX case. It can actually accommodate an E-ATX motherboard and an awful lot of other bits and pieces. And I looked at it and I thought, that's neat. And then I realized that the suite's kind of split in two and this side had a bunch of stuff. There's a further room for some new bits and pieces. One half of the suite was basically variants on Evolve X. What I thought was like three or four different cases was actually this case in different forms. So we had uh, the case bare so you could have a good walk around it and then we had three versions of um, and this is where we come to the accessory kit you do not generally get an accessory kit of this size with a regular case and inside that accessory kit we've got uh, nuts bolts fasteners a few bits and pieces and four of these fellas these are three and a half inch drive caddies uh, and I note they do also have uh, mounts for a two and a half inch SSDs as well. And essentially you can build your Evolve X in three different ways. You can build it as a straight PC with a load of, well you could build it as a straight PC with air cooling, but in which case I would argue you're missing the point of this case and it becomes a rather expensive purchase. Uh, you can build it as a straight single PC with a load of liquid cooling. The uh, Evolve ATX TG could accommodate 360 rads top and front. This can now take a 420 at the front should you choose. Uh, as has been demonstrated many times by PC builders, when you hear words like 360 or 280 rad, it does depend on the maker model because they're different widths and such like. Uh, but if once you get past that, broadly speaking, you can cram a monstrous amount of liquid cooling in this case, despite the fact it looks fairly compact. If you're doing that, clearly you're taking up uh, all the space at the front, which means that you're going down into the front of the power supply area. Uh, but that's no problem. I mean, that, that's entirely doable. The second option is to go for storage. Now these four drive caddies, and they're really clever little fellas, get them right around, bits of bent tin, and they basically snap together like so, and then they slide into place. There's various cutouts in the bottom. And the idea is that you can have these four caddies like so, bomf, or you can have them like so. You can move them around uh, like stacky bricky kinds of things, but you can put those beneath the power supply cover, out of sight. You are then encroaching into this front section of the case, your radiator area is limit, limited to this, not a problem, uh, so 240, 280 kind of limitation. And then you can put these four caddies in plus a bunch of SSDs and you're good. Uh, the actual spec is, and this is where it gets a bit remarkable, is that this uh, case will support up to 10 three and a half inch hard drives because you can put these four caddies in the bottom and you can then buy extras and you can plug them in uh, where I've in this build got uh, the uh, Fantex uh, reservoir pump assembly, in which case you're turning into a storage configuration. You've also got two very clever stealth doors I'll come to in a moment, uh, and you can mount SSDs on those. Uh, you don't get SSD sleds to do that, although there are some positions for SSD sleds, you literally screw the SSDs to the stealth doors. Uh, so you could ha easily have 10 three and a half inch hard drives and 10 two and a half inch SSDs. That's 20. Now, you may recall when Fantex demoed this, uh, that particular version at uh, Computex, they had to use uh, a PCI Express uh, SATA card because, you know, no motherboard has that many SATA connections. Um, so we've got three options. Dual system, which is mini ITX in the roof, uh, Revoltex power supply, which can power both systems simultaneously. That requires accessories, those parts available soon. This variant here, which is a regular PC with a load of liquid cooling, or minimize your system and go crazy with your storage. That's, that's a huge range of options. As you pull off each of the panels, you realize things are just subtly different. So you pull the front panel and it just kind of rocks forward and stops. And then you just lift it out. And you can see it's got some RGB strips uh, with a contact at the top that connects to the case thus. And it lifts away and out comes a filter. And when I put the filter back in, 
magnetic kind of snick into place. The three uh, RGB fans you can see are not actually RGB fans. They are these Halos Lux frames I've added to the stock fans. The stock fans are unilluminated, just want to make that completely clear. Uh, slide open, or swing open rather, the glass doors. Quite a tight fit. Uh, they're held in place with magnets, they've got rubber gaskets uh, to seal them. Uh, partly for dust, but also so you get, don't get a clonking noise as they shut, they are relatively quiet. And the other door, which is still... Re ah, yes. When the case ships, the two doors are secured by these uh, screws. You have to pull off the front panel and remove two screws on each side. And the idea is, once you've done that the one time, you can then leave the screws out. I found with the back door that uh, it wanted to kind of pop open a tad, so I found it better to leave those two screws in place. Those doors incidentally are handed, they're not interchangeable. It's not immediately apparent when you pick a door up which side it should go on, but if you get it wrong you'll find it'll sort of stand about yay tall. Uh, that is one of the handful of very minor annoyances I've found with this case. I'm saying handful as in like two or three fingers full. Uh, so the doors are not handed and that back door that ought to just uh, swing shut doesn't quite for me. But Securing it two screws, not a problem. And then we have my build. But before we get to my build, let's just take a quick tour of the bits and pieces that stand out. So we have RGB lighting built into the power supply cover, and it's the sort of power supply cover that uh, separates the two main compartments, but uh, you can see your power supply. In this case, a Seasonic Prime Titanium 600 watt fanless, uh, which I like because it bugs me when you look around the back of a case and you can see the logo upside down. That's annoying. And if you spent a load of money on a decent power supply, it's a shame not to kind of have it acknowledged. The motherboard is a Gigabyte Z370 Aorus Ultra Gaming. We have some memory from Team. It's their T-Force RGB, uh, Excalibur RGB to be pedantic, 3600 megahertz. Uh, the processor, Coffee Lake Core i7-8700K. Uh, the block, Fantex Glacier. Uh, GTX 1080 Ti graphics card EVGA with uh, an alpha cool block. Uh, there we have a Fantex Glacier reservoir, it's their 220. Uh, I've put a DDC pump in it, so it is actually a reservoir pump unit. You can just see the pump there. Uh, Fantex fittings, alpha cool 280 radiator at the front because the fans are 140s, so I've used the stock fans blowing through. Uh, and all is happy. But you will have noticed the graphics card is vertically mounted and this is using accessories that were supplied with this uh, case. So obviously I could have gone horizontal, but uh, they actually supplied this little doohickey here that screws to the case. In addition to the uh, PCI Express riser cable that comes in this accessory box, you also get a 90 degree adapter, uh, which makes a lot of sense. Um, there we go. Nice and solid, very well done. Uh, I have not quite lost count, that'd be unfair, but I've seen a few cases now where you get a ribbon cable uh, supplied and you get vertical slots, uh, vertical brackets on the case, but to actually install the graphics card, it kind of flops around or is barely supported. This is properly done, I like it a lot. Uh, what else? Oh yes, um, so at the top of the case, the radiator, there's no slidey rack kind of thing. Uh, which was becoming a Fantex thing. A number of other manufacturers have picked up on that now. Uh, instead, Fantex has simply gone for a top panel, the two thumb screws that remain captive and slides away. Loads of ventilation, as you can see. Uh, a number of manufacturers have actually uh, supplied uh, panels modded for uh, Fantex uh, Evolve including Mod My Mods in New York, and I believe Overclockers over here does panels. You can buy a case that's got modded panels uh, because it really was restricted. And then at the top, two more thumb screws, and just slide that away. And now we have complete access to the top of the case, including the fill port on the reservoir. And if you choose, you can put a fill port in there if you're connecting it all up, if you want to leave this rack. So if you're putting a rad in the top, you may want a fill port there to connect through to this reservoir that would otherwise be just completely inaccessible. Very neat idea. Um, and this also sums up to my mind uh, Fantec's approach uh, to this case, which is that the design is very clever, the construction is perfectly adequate, which might sound like 
horrible rudeness. But that is actually, to my mind, what good design is all about, which is, as the saying goes, doing for $1 what any fool can do for $10. So the steel there is just about strong enough. It flexes, but of course, when it's supported on these three points here and then lock down those thumb screws there, it's rigid and that's how it ought to be. You will note all the mounts are slotted so you can go for a 120 or 140 form uh, and that's all uh, lovely and you can move your radiator along. And in the accessories we have this little plastic panel here which simply snicks into place. So if you are putting your rad either to the front or the rear, you can then blank off the section before or after to make sure the air flows through the radiator rather than meeting the resistance of the rad and flowing around it. Makes an awful lot of sense uh, and would have cost absolutely nothing whatsoever. Very neat, there's a lot of touches like that. Before I spin the case around and show you the back and there's quite a lot to see around the back, one feature you can barely see with this built system is the cable management plates, but head over to kitguru.net, you'll see photos of the bare case. And if I just move this plate here, you can just about see that. If I shine a torch, you can see it better. And it uh, has a number of functions. Uh, the most obvious being is it just makes the case look neater if the front section of the case is empty. If you don't have liquid cooling there, if you don't have storage there, it's neater. If you remove the liquid cooling and remove those plates, you can put these caddies in place. As I say, the idea of taking this case to my mind and putting storage there, I, I just don't see the need. It has plenty of storage anyway, but you might want to do that. However, you can leave those plates in place and use them to guide cables through. Uh, that is quite a nifty approach. Actually, there's similarly this little plate here, a uh, little sliding plastic plate, which is quite handy for putting your uh, PCI Express graphics cables up and through. You can remove that plate in its entirety. It just pulls forward, lifts out. When case manufacturers put glass on both sides, it often feels like they've lost their minds as they're showing off the grotty side of the build. But here, it just works. Let's just remove that. So the, case, uh, the panel has a uh, painted periphery, which essentially covers this part here. And then we unclip these cable plates and we can see the build. Uh, the cable covers, in addition to covering the cables, also have these uh, rubber grommets in these uh, drilled or stamped holes. And if we take those out, we can see that the holes line up with these SSD mounts. So you take some screws from the accessory pack, make sure your cables are at this end of things, one, two, three, four screws, bingo, SSD mounted. Repeat that one, two, three, four, five, six times. You've got six SSDs mounted without any extras whatsoever. Or if you want, you can use the standard Fantex drive sleds and you can mount SSDs uh, there. Although uh, this EPS cable seems to run exactly where that caddy would want to be, but you could probably get it in place. Nonetheless, many SSDs, no problem whatsoever. And what about these hard drive mounts? So, as I say, in the main compartment, uh, I can take out the covers here and I can then uh, install these caddies on the other side of these uh, slots here. But more usefully, if I pull out this cabling here, quite a significant space there, 280 rad at the front, therefore I've got no radiator dropping down, so this is open. And I take one of these drive caddies, I install a three and a half inch hard drive, put some screws in, I slide it in place, I line up the tags with the holes in the floor of the case, like so, and I push it forward and it's locked, just like that. And if I want to do the same again there, I can put that on top and then that locks to that caddy. And that would be like so. If I wanted instead to mount it beside the first caddy, uh, I'm then going to go there, in which case I've got that much space in front of the power supply. It's a fully modular power supply, with C-Sonic Prime Titanium. Uh, I'm then going to be tight for space, but it is just about doable. I could put four caddies underneath. I'm going to have to work on the cables a little bit, but it is doable. If the power supply is bigger than the 600 watt fanless in terms of length, then I don't think it would be practical to use those positions there. But putting two caddies in shouldn't be an issue. If I've got a monster power supply, and I've got a really long rad that's dropping right down to the floor of the case, then those spaces may all be taken. It definitely depends on how you want to use the space. But if all that space is occupied by cables, power supply, cooling, 
I've still got all these two and a half inch mounts. So there are many options and it's all really good. These are the connectors for those halo fan frames that give all the RGB. So uh, SATA connection powers the uh, shooting match and then uh, these uh, just daisy chain into the lighting system for the case. Fantex has even done work on the hook and loop straps for cable management. Uh, generally speaking, a hook and loop strap, it's uh, anchored at one end, you have to feed it through a metal tag of some sort, so it means you have to get the, the sort of end of this thing to come through and then back out the other side, and you hook it round and it's job done. This little uh, fella here, you slide that in like that, do that, job done, really easy. One of my sort of metrics for how easy a build has been is how many cable ties I have to use. I've used three in this build, one there and two on the other side securing the uh, power cables for the graphics card. That's it, all the rest hook and loop. At the top of the case we have the new uh, Fantex fan splitter. Uh, this cable here is the one that feeds off in this case to the CPU fan header but any uh, fan header and then we've got five four pin uh, headers and three three pins so a total of eight fan supported and instead of having the kind of usual rectangular affair that's that sort of size that sits somewhere like this it's completely innocuous and out of the way. Uh, when the case was supplied the three stop fans were connected to it so it's literally a case of take that cable plug it into a header on the motherboard job done. Absolutely lovely. That is a really neat piece of work. Fantex Evolve X is a superb case. It does indeed deliver what was promised at uh, Computex, and that's obviously a very good thing indeed. Sometimes you get your expectations up and then they get slightly dashed. In this case, no, not at all. Building a system in this case was as good as I had hoped. Uh, building, say, a dual system or going for one of these sorts of real extreme variants with multiple radiators and such, that might get slightly more complicated, but it feels good, it feels right. Uh, the price, unfortunately, is just over £200, £210 in the UK, whereas £199.99 would have been psychologically better. That might just be a UK thing rather than a global thing. Pound prices at the moment are all over the place with all sorts of things. And my thoughts with the Evolve X are perhaps slightly unkindly. Well, why didn't we have this last year or the year before? I had a similar thought when I first saw the Primo and then when I saw the Pro M, which is like, well, why aren't all cases like this? And then when Fantex started rolling out tempered glass in place of acrylic, it's like, well, why aren't all cases like this? And when I saw the uh, Evolve ATX TG, which is a perfectly decent case, didn't breathe brilliantly, but it did a nice job. This case appears to be so similar to the Evolve ATX, but it's different in so many respects. Little bits here and there, and they all add up to make a much better case, really much better. Even though superficially, cosmetically, it's the same case, it just isn't. It works better in every respect. It's not two step forward, one step back. It is just better. It sets a new benchmark. What I especially like about the Evolve X is the options it gives you. You can indeed build dual system inside this uh, case. Uh, it's not for me, but I understand some people want to do that. And then you're getting a lot of hardware into a really small space. You can put the crazy amounts of storage in should you feel the urge. Again, not for me. I use four drives in my own PC. Uh, that's not extreme. But if you want to go down that route for some reason, you can. And then you get the conventional PC with a decent amount of cooling, conventional PC with a load of cooling in this case. It's not like some other cases that are much larger. Uh, where you're kind of obliged to pad them out with extra stuff to make them look sensible. This case is a compact ATX tower and it just works. It works as a central build, it works as an extreme build. You have options but you're not being forced to do things just to kind of use the case. And then you go to the little bits and pieces like those hook and loop straps and such like and the cable covers and the fact you can just literally put SSDs in there. There's so many good things. The RGB is really good RGB. It's not just RGB that's got a few LEDs. It looks lovely and so on and so forth. Deeply impressed. I'm assuming that Fantex next step is going to be to bring out a micro ATX version in this case and then the mini ITX and that is really appealing to me. Oh, I'd like to see what they do with this case in a smaller form factor where you presumably won't have the option of dual system. Uh, so a mini ITX of this, if they go down that route, could be absolutely intriguing and if they do that I really look forward to it. But as things stand, Fantex Evolve X has delivered what was promised at Computex. Big whoop and yay and thumbs up. Deeply, deeply happy. 
I'm Neil Walder for Kit Guru. This is Fantex Evolve X. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. If you want more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe, hit the bell button, we'll tell you about new videos as they become available.